Hello, my name is Joe Rooney, and I'm a staff editor with CMX. We have prepared this videotape to assist you in learning about the edge. We will go over the entire operation of the system, as well as some of its special features. While you're viewing the tape, if you'll keep your operator's guide handy, I think you'll find that in very short time, you'll become proficient with the edge. All right, upon power up, you'll notice the screen, the message, the edge is ready, and the version of the software that's currently being used in your system. As you look at the edge, first off, notice the setup, motion, edit, and mark button. Those are the main modes used in operating the edge. There's the enter AB button. That's for entering numeric information and selecting playback sources, either A or B. We have mark buttons, mark in and mark out on the left side, which is used for your playback machines, and mark in and mark out on the right side. That is used exclusively for the record machine. Next, we have the all stop button. The all stop button has a variety of uses. If you have VTRs that are in motion and you push the all stop button once, it puts all of the VTRs into a jog mode. If you push it twice, all of the VTRs are put into a stop mode. A secondary use for the all stop button is whenever you're using a subscreen it, and push the all stop button, it will always return you to the primary screen of the mode that you're operating in. A third use is when you're doing an open-ended edit, that is, an edit without a definite out point, and you push the all stop button, it will end the edit and give you a clean out point. It can also be used to give you an out point for previews. We have, running down the side of each screen, 12 smart keys. The smart keys actually pick up their definition from the screen, depending on which mode you're using currently. Then we have the real motion controllers, the one on the left for your playback machines, the one on the right for the record machines. By turning these, you, in effect, control the speed and direction of your VTRs. All right, those are all of the controls on the edge. The next thing we should do is go into the operating modes, setup, motion, edit, and marks. To begin with, we'll go into setup. Under setup, you have the ability to tailor the operating parameters to your own needs. The keys are pre-roll, reaction, frame tolerance, color framing, capstan, test, and code pulse. You may also have edit list if you have that option, and if you're using the PAL system, you will have a key for PAL pairing. Pre-roll. Pre-roll is the distance that your VTRs must travel in order to lock up before the edit point. Not all VTRs can lock up in the same length of time. As I push the pre-roll button, notice that the screen changes. Suddenly, the smart keys now pick up num numerical values. Pre-roll has a default of 180 frames, that is, six seconds. Your VTR may need a longer or shorter time. If it does need to be changed, simply use the smart keys to enter the value. In this case, I'll use 120 frames. One, two, zero. Use the Enter key to put the numerical information into the edge. We go back to the primary screen, and now we notice that the pre-roll is set for 120 frames. Reaction time. From the time you actually see a picture on the screen to the time your fingers push the mark buttons, there's a certain lag time. You can compensate for that lag time by using reaction. As I push the reaction button, here we see, once again, the numerical screen come up. The default for reaction is zero frames. Now, the reaction number means that every time you push the mark in button, whichever value ha you have listed under reaction will be subtracted from your mark point. That compensates for the delay between your eye and your finger. Use the reaction time which is best suited for you. Now, notice that by pushing the all stop button, I will return to the primary operating screen of setup. The next key is frame tolerance. Not all VTRs are frame accurate, and the edge will not make an inaccurate edit. However, by using frame tolerance, you can assign a window of error for certain VTRs that cannot make frame accurate edits. The edge will allow the machine to make an inaccurate edit 
However, any edit list that is put off on a paper tape, floppy disk, or printer will carry the exact value that you wanted the edit at. The frame tolerance is from zero to three frames and many times will allow you to make an edit that you couldn't otherwise. Color frame. Use, refer to your operator's guide for a complete description of color framing. And you assign your color frame by pushing the button. It will say color frame even or odd or referencing to the RVTR. Its default is even. Edit list, we'll go through that a little bit later in the tape. Capstan. Capstan is used for fine tuning your edge to operate your VTRs at the maximum efficiency. Test. Test is used to, to diagnose the electronics in the edge and should only be used by qualified personnel. Please beware, any selection will clear edit data. So avoid using test. Code pulse. Your edge will operate in either time code or control track pulse mode. You select which you want to operate in on this screen. RVTR is code or pulse. AVTR is code or pulse and BVTR is code or pulse. If they're all running in code, you can assign whether it's drop frame or non-drop frame on the other side of the screen. It is possible to have one machine in pulse, one machine in time code reading non-drop frame, and one machine in time code reading drop frame. The edge will handle all of the tapes and make all of its calculations correctly. And that's the setup. Next, we'll cover the motion mode. Motion is the mode the edge uses to move tape at a variety of speeds. Your controls on the left are for your playback, controls on the right for the record machine. I have initially selected ABTR here by using the AB select key will toggle over to BVTR if you have a BVTR interface. If not, you will only receive messages for the AVTR. Forward or reverse, play, normal play speed, scan, depending on your VTR, it will give you fast motion with picture in either forward or reverse. Fast goes into the equivalent of fast forward or rewind, depending on what you have selected. Stop stops the machines. If you have a cassette machine, it will unthread. And jog allows you to use the motion controllers. In addition, you have tape locations for each VTR in use, RVTR, and it will tell you the tape location as well as its frame code mode, whether non-drop frame or drop frame. It will also tell you which operating mode it's in. The RVTR right now is in stop. If I push it into play, it will tell me it's in play, read time code where it's located, or control track pulses, and the arrows will indicate which direction it's going in, both the labeling by the smart key and the arrows next to the play. If I go into scan, I'm now scanning at multiple speed with picture in reverse. I can go immediately into forward or reverse, makes no difference. Fast will unthread the machines like this if it's a cassette machine and show you time code as it's backing up. I can put it back into play and I can go into stop or jog. Now, notice that every time I've entered a new mode, the labels have changed. Now my real motion controllers are enabled. I can move forward, frame by frame by frame, or in reverse, frame by frame by frame. A little bit faster, the speed depending on how fast I turn the controller. Multiple speed, give it a spin and push the jog button again. This time it goes into hold, and it holds the speed that I've been dialing. To go back into jog, I simply push the jog button again, go forward if I want, 
push hold again, and now I'm going frame by frame by frame without moving the motion controller. Both sides operate simultaneously. I can select my AVTR over here, put that into play, put that into jog, move it ahead, reading time code all the while. It is possible to run an A machine, a B machine, and an RVTR all simultaneously. However, the audio you hear will be from the machine that was last selected. I can put them all into jog by hitting all stop once, which anytime they're in jog, the motion controllers are enabled. Or if I hit the all stop twice, it stops the machines entirely. On the motion screen, your mark buttons are enabled. For example, on my AVTR, if I put it into play, and I see a scene that I want to mark, I push mark in. I get a momentary message with an I indicating a mark in point just below the AVTR. If I want to mark an out point, I push the out button. I get an O in the current in the mark time of that move. Likewise, the same works for the record side. That's how you mark on the fly. Marking pictures you look, mark pictures and sound, and that's, that's the way to edit tape, not by numbers, even though the numbers are very handy and you'll use them uh, frequently. That, in a nutshell, is the motion screen. Very easy, very fast. And don't forget your A and B modes using your Enter A, B key. All right? Let's go in to edit mode. Upon power up, the edge is set at default values. Shown as a cut to black, no edit inputs, that is no video or audio inputs. So you start off fresh. The first thing you may want to do is select your inputs, whether you want video, turning it on or off, Audio 1, on or off. Audio 2, on or off. Your audio channels can be disabled at the electronics chassis to prevent over-recording of time code. You also select the type of transition you want, whether you want to cut or whether you want to make dissolves or wipes. You can do dissolves directly with the edge if you have the internal dissolve option. Even if you don't, you can still program a dissolve or a wipe to be output onto the edit decision list if you have that option. A wipe cannot be performed by the edge. However, a dissolve will be made in its place to show you the, the transition speed. You can set up a split edit, which allows your audio and video to be made at the same edit, but at different times during the edit. You can use the general purpose interface to select triggering points for external devices, which we'll talk about in a moment. You can preview in a variety of ways an upcoming edit. You can record directly from the edit screen, and you can replay a previously recorded edit. To select a video and audio edit, select a video and then the audio channel that we desire. Decide upon the transition. If a cut is desired, Push the cut button. It will then tell you cut to and ask for you to select the source, either AVTR, BVTR, auxiliary, which can be any composite video signal, or black. I'll choose to cut to AVTR, return to the primary screen, and now says cut to AVTR. If an effect is desired, select the effects button and the type of effect transition you want, either a dissolve or a wipe. If I select Dissolve, I get the Dissolve screen up. The first key says From and To, with two highlighted. You have two sources for Dissolve. You have the From source, that is, the first source that you want to record, and then Dissolve to a secondary source. The Edge assumes that you want to 
edit from a previous source that you've already used and dissolve to an upcoming source. Therefore, it is set up for you to select only one source, that is the two source. As we see here, we're dissolving from ABTR to BVTR. I can always go and change my from source if I choose to, uh, as well as I can select auxiliary or black as one of my sources. Then we currently have a duration of zero frames, that is, the same as a cut. To put in a duration time, a transition, I select the set dur key, and then I come up with a number screen. The edge does transitions from zero to 255 frames. 255 frames being eight and a half seconds long. If I wanted a duration of 60 frames, I would select 60, and using the Enter key, put it into the edge. We now have a dissolve from ABTR to BVTR with a duration of 60 frames. Using the All Stop button, I'll return to the primary edit screen where the same message is shown. If I choose to do a wipe, I get the same screen. The only difference is I have a button for wipe code to select the wipe pattern that I want. Split edits. When using a cut as a transition, it's possible to separate the audio and video from entering at the edit point so that they enter at different times during the edit. To select the split, simply push the split button and decide which source you want to delay, either the video or the audio. If I want to delay the video, I select the video, tells me delayed video, and the amount of time I'm delaying it by. Since we've just powered up the system, zero is its default. I can select the delay time in three ways. The first is using the set key. The set key comes up with a message saying set delay equal to. And then using the numerical screen, I enter the value. Now, because we're entering time code information, it's important to realize some distinctions. If I enter one or two numbers into the system, such as here I have 12, the edge will understand those numbers to be frames, 12 frames. If I enter a third number, such as five, it assumes that I'm entering time code and puts a colon in for me automatically. In this case, my set delay is 1 second and 25 frames. If I choose to use that, I use the Enter key and insert it into the system. I now have a delayed video of 1 second and 25 frames. Now, we have two other ways of entering delay times. One is I can trim an existing value, select Trim, and now I have 125 that I can adjust. If I want to subtract 25 frames, I push the minus, 2, 5, enter. My delay is now one second even. The third way to enter a delay time is through the mark motion key. The mark motion key will take you into a screen, which is a modified motion screen, allowing you to play your tapes manually. And then whenever you mark, either on the playback or record side, the edge will calculate the distance from the edit endpoint to the time you've just marked and enter that as your delay value automatically. If you choose to cancel your split edit, you can either select any video or audio source, which will cancel it automatically, or push the split key again and select the key labeled none. That will cancel your split edit. The next key is the general purpose interface key, GPI. The GPI allows you to trigger external devices at specific time code addresses. There are two GPI triggers, General Purpose Interface 1 and General Purpose Interface 2. The left side of the screen is for GPI 1, the right side is for GPI 2. As we look down the screen, we see that we can turn GPI 1 on or off, the same with GPI 2. The next key says in or tran. That's transition. You can have your GPI activated from the edit endpoint or from the transition point of a dissolve or wipe. There is also a delay time. You can have the general purpose interface triggered immediately at the edit endpoint by having a delay of zero, or at the transition point by having a delay of zero, or at any point before or after those points. 
Once again, we have three ways of setting those delay times, just like split. We have set where I can enter an absolute value, one second, 25 frames. I can trim that same value by a minus 25 if I choose to, or I can use mark motion, thereby coming up with a modified motion screen and marking the value manually through the mark in buttons. GPI is a very, very powerful tool. You will find many uses for it, from turning on an audio tape recorder to a switcher to a turntable. Very, very versatile. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about previews. We have a variety of previews in the Edge. If you push the preview key, you'll see that we have six specific types of previews. Now, what I'd like to do right now is go to uh, a drawing of how previews work and exactly how they're set up. To understand the preview modes of the Edge, it's important to understand how the Edge actually edits. It does insert type editing, that is, replaces old video with new video. On your record tape, you must have previous, previously recorded material, either black or previous scene. Into this, you are now going to insert new video. This will set up a three-part edit. The video from the previously recorded material, followed by your new inserting video, followed by a return to the previously recorded video. If you'd like to see this edit in context before you actually perform the edit, select Video, 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 Preview. If you'd like to look at the video being inserted all by itself, select Black, Video, Black. That way you'll see five seconds of black, followed by your new insert, followed by another five seconds of black. If you'd like to take a look at the material into which you're editing, select Video, Black, Video. That way you'll see five seconds of your previously recorded material, followed by black, followed by a return to the following five seconds of your previously recorded material. If you have particularly long insert edits and would like to examine just the out point, select video, video. That way you'll see the last five seconds of your inserting video, followed by a return to the previously recorded video. Video black, which will show you the last five seconds of your video, followed by an edit to black, or black video, which will show you five seconds of black, followed by a return to your previously recorded material. Using these six types of previews, you can examine every edit point on the upcoming edit. All right, let's return to the keys. Now as we look at previews a little closer, we have video, black, video, black, video, black, the normal video, video, video preview, the out black video preview, which shows us the last five seconds of the edit, out video black, and out video video. Very, very versatile, very important. They allow you to use timecode editing to its fullest. Preview is also the first automatic function we'll talk about. With these automatic functions, record, preview, cue, and replay, Associated screens come up. When I push preview, video, 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 the run screen associated with that appears on the screen. It tells us the transition type, the sources involved, the type of automatic function, the event number, the VTRs involved, RVTR and AVTR in this case, their synchronization status, the in times, out times, and running times. When the automatic function finishes, it stops and returns to the primary screen. Now I'll show you the record run screen. When we finish previewing, we use the record button. Simply press the record and the associated run screen comes up. Once again, it tells us what the transition type is, what sources are involved, that it's recording, the event number, the VTRs, synchronization status, in and out times, and running times. When it finishes the edit, it automatically stops, returns to the primary screen you are in. One other thing with record, the motion control knobs are automatically activated so that you can immediately continue with your next edit 
without returning to any other screen. Replay will show us the last performed edit. Its automatic screen comes up. Once again, gives us the full status. In this case, it's a cut involving video and audio one, RVTR in and out time, and the running time will show us the last performed edit all the way through. Anytime you want to stop an automatic function or abort, simply hit all stop and it will abort the function. Well, that's the edit screen. Now let's turn to the final screen, the marks mode. The marks mode allows you to examine each of your edit parameters, the in and out points for your record machine, as well as your A and B machines, and duration times for auxiliary and black. You will also see durations for the R, A, and B machines if their out times exceed their in times. In making an edit, you need minimum edit points. If you're only involving auxiliary or black, you need an in point for your record machine. If you're involving the A or B machines, you will also need endpoints for those machines. If you only use endpoints, you are doing what's known as an open-ended edit. That is, the system will stay in record mode until you end the edit by pushing the All Stop button. The All Stop button will terminate the edit, giving you a clean out point, as well as noting the out time as the last recorded frame, either time code or control track, pulse. If you choose to make a finite edit, that is one with an out point, select an out point for either the record machine or the source machines involved, and that will terminate the edit. If you have out times for the record machine as well as the, the source machines, the record machine will take priority and end the edit at the end of its duration. The system will automatically calculate the third parameter if you enter the first two. That is, if you enter an in point and an out point, it will automatically calculate the duration time. If you enter an in point and a duration time, it will automatically calculate the out time. And in back timing, if you enter an out time and a duration time, it will automatically calculate the end time. To enter specific time code information or pulse count information, push the set button. The set button then brings up the screen that allows you to enter time code information into any one of the specific parameters, the A in, the A out, the A duration, B in, B out, B duration, R in, out, and R duration, as well as auxiliary and black. If I choose to enter the time code of one hour into the record machine, I select R in, and then I get a number screen saying set R in equal. I then enter the time code information. Now remember, if I only enter two numbers, it calculates according to frames. If I enter a third number or more, it automatically puts the colon in and calculates as time code or pulse count. So I'll enter one hour, push the enter button, and now my R end time is set for one hour. That would be my end point, and I would start recording at one hour of time code on my RVTR. Likewise, I can set my end time for my A or B machines, in this case, set A in for two hours. And if I went into edit at this point, I would start recording from hour two of the A machine onto one hour of the R machine. It would be an open-ended edit, and I would hit all stop to terminate the edit. I could also set out times and duration times. I can set a duration time for the A machine by selecting A dur. Set A dur equal to, if I choose to have a five second duration, I enter five seconds, enter. It automatically calculates the out time and shows me the five second duration in highlighted video. If I want to keep a specific out time and have the machine automatically back time, I set a negative duration. In this case, I would set A duration equal to a minus figure. Minus, if I want the edit to last for 10 seconds and end at 2 hours and 5 seconds, I would enter a minus 10 seconds. Enter, my out time has remained the same and my end time has been changed.
to reflect the duration time entered. If I choose to manipulate and change, adjust a specific time code parameter, I use the trim key. By depressing the trim key, I now get the parameter screen. And if I choose to change the A in time, for example, I select A in, I trim A in by either a minus or a positive figure. In this case, I'll trim by a positive five seconds. This means I'm adding five seconds to my end time. Enter, and my time code has been changed to reflect the new adjustment. You can also trim your duration times. However, when you trim a duration, it automatically adjusts the out time, keeping your end time the same. If you want to trim your duration and have it adjust the end time, you must set a minus duration. OK, that's how you enter and adjust time code parameters with your set and trim keys. Sometimes you'll find it necessary to transfer numbers from one parameter to another, or sometimes save specific numbers by putting them in parameter locations that aren't being used in the current edit. The transfer key allows you to do that. I can transfer from my RN to auxiliary. It will automatically copy the RN time down into the auxiliary. I can try a new end time with my record machine, try that as an edit. If I don't like it, I can transfer the auxiliary time back into the RN time. Uh, this allows you to try multiple versions of an edit and still keep the same numbers without having to re-enter all of the specific numbers. Another button is the recall button. The recall button automatically brings back the last performed edit with all of its edit parameters. So the edge automatically saves your last completed edit. In this case, I've already put uh, a previous edit in, for example. If I push recall, we get a highlighted recall button, and it brings back the parameters. We made an edit to black for 10 seconds, the RN time was 59.50 and recorded up to one hour. So by pushing the recall button, we automatically do an exchange. Anytime you are in the recall mode, you can change any of the parameters of the previously recorded edit. That is the source, the end times, whether it's an audio video, audio only, and re-record it. It will automatically re-record over the previous edit and if you have the edit list option, it will enter another duplicate event after the previous event. That is, if you've previously recorded a number three, recall it and do it again, it will enter a new number three. Uh, and when you automatically assemble using that list, the second number three will be recorded and not the first. Recall uh, the Q feature. By pushing the Q key, you come up with a screen that says select VTR to Q. This allows you to pre-position any one of the machines to its endpoint. If I select the RVTR right now, my machine will roll to the one hour mark on the videotape minus the pre-roll distance. So it will actually park at the pre-roll distance away from the endpoint. You also have uh, preview the two preview keys and the record keys, which allow you to preview or record directly from the mark screen, you have replay. Replay allows you to examine and replay the last performed edit so that you can see it in context. We'll show you the last five seconds of the before the edit point, then roll through the edit and show you the five seconds after the end of the edit point. That, in essence, is the mark screen. Yeah. It basically shows you all of your edit parameters, allows you to recall a previous, previously recorded edit, allows you to queue, allows you to replay a previous edit, and allows you to preview and record directly. It also allows you to use your mark features and mark your in and out points on your tape. In video editing, there are normally three types of transitions. There's the cut transition, which involves one playback source. 
there are the dissolve and wipe transitions, which involve two playback sources. These are normally referred to as multi-source edits. Now, the first source is normally referred to as the from source. You are recording from the first source and then going from that source to a second source. That second source is referred to as the to source, from one source to another source. In CMX editing, there are three rules that are very helpful in making transitions. The first rule is, you might write this down, the first rule, the out point of the from source will determine the beginning of the transition. The out point of the from source will determine the beginning of the transition. All right. The second rule, the transition duration, that is how long your dissolve or wipe takes to occur, is accounted for in the timing of the two source. The transition rate is accounted for in the timing of the two source. And the third rule, the duration of the two source must be at least as long as the transition rate in order to complete the transition. Okay? With those three rules, let's go through an example. I've set up a dissolve here, but please remember that what I discuss is what applies equally to a wipe as well as to a dissolve. Here we're dissolving from the AVTR to the BVTR with a duration of 60 frames or two seconds. The AVTR, we're giving a duration of five seconds. The BVTR, we're giving a duration of three seconds. The transition duration, 60 frames or two seconds. Rule number one, the out point of the from source determines the beginning of the transition. The AVTR will play full video for five seconds. At the end of that five second duration, it will begin a fade to black. At the same time, the BVTR will fade up from black in 60 frames and continue on. Now, rule number two, the duration rate must be taken out of the timing of the two source. In this case, three seconds less 60 frames gives us one second left of full frame video after the transition is completed. Rule number three, the duration of the two source must be at least as long as the transition. In this case, we must have a duration of at least 60 frames or two seconds. If we had any shorter time, we would get a defined out point error message. All right, let's go through those rules again. Dissolving from the AVTR to the BVTR, the out point determines the beginning of the transition. We go for five seconds full video. At the end of that five second duration, we begin uh, dissolve to black. We come up from B, VTR from black, in 60 frames, and continue full frame after the dissolve is completed for one more second. Okay? If your from source has no duration, that is, your out point and the end point are equal, or the out point is less than the end point, you will begin your transition immediately upon beginning the edit. You'll do a match frame and begin dissolving out while your B source dissolves in or wipes in. Remember, dissolve and wipe use the same three rules. Okay? The edit list option allows you to record edit information from the edge onto an external device, such as paper tape, floppy disk, or teleprinter. There are certain pieces of information that are transferred to those devices. They are the event number associated with a particular edit, the videotape reel number involved with that particular edit, the audio video sources involved in that edit, the transition type, such as cut, dissolve, wipe, or key, and associated information, such as the wipe code or transition rates, the playback in and out points, and the record in and out points. Okay, let's go through the keys. The edit list screen is in the setup mode, and with it you can set the parameters needed 
for your edit decision list that you will either punch off or print off or put onto floppy disk. The first key is for record, either record on or record off. With record off, you can prepare a paper list without rolling VTRs and have it punched onto your external device. Um, you, you don't have to go through and make a recording to create an edit decision list. Simply re turn record on to record off. AVTR reel and BVTR reel allow you to select specific reel numbers that will be transmitted to the edit decision list. Select AVTR and a number screen comes up. Enter any number from 1 to 253 and that will be the number that's assigned to that specific reel number. The same for BVTR reel. Event number. At the, the default for beginning an edit session is event number one. If you choose to use another event number, simply push the event number key and select the value from one, from one through 999. The next key is the EDL key. If you choose to output the edit decisions onto an external device, either paper tape, floppy disk, or teleprinter, you must turn EDL on. Before you turn EDL on, though, you must tell the, the system where you want to output the information. Either serial out, which will be your paper tape and teleprinter, or disk, disk append disk or new disk out. Here we'll use serial out. I will now turn EDL on, and it will signify that it's now on. You cannot output any information until you turn EDL on. Copy. Copy allows you to take information and read it from paper tape or disk and output it to either paper tape or floppy disk. It can, in, a, in effect, you copy from one source to another gives you the ability to duplicate a list. All right, serial in, serial out. Serial in, you will use for auto assembly. That will tell the edge to look to your paper tape for input for your edit decision list so that it can be auto assembled. Disk in allows the floppy disk to be the input device, and the edge will look to the floppy disk for input. And that's the edit list screen. Once you've created your edit decision list, or EDL, you can now assemble it automatically on the edge. The way the edge works is like this. It takes your edit decision list and reads each event into its memory event by event. And it reads two events at a time. Here we have event number one, we have event number two, we have event number three, and then we have an an another event number three. Uh, apparently, Another a second event number three was put into the edit decision list to correct an error made on the first one. The edge will automatically load number one into its memory and then load the second one in, which is a number two. It compares the edit event number. If it finds that they're different, it will automatically go ahead and auto-assemble the first event. It will then, when it finishes that, load the next event in and do a compare again, comparing number three with number two. When it completes number two, it will load in the next event, which is the second number three. It will, it will do a compare and see that there are two number three events and eliminate the first one that was loaded into memory and automatically complete the second number three, assuming that you wanted the second one to be a correction of the first one. OK, you have two ways of auto-assembling, using the assemble, a mode which allows you to do group assembly, either one or a group of events, the limits which you define from one until the end of the list, one until number five, and so on. Or you can use the step mode, which allows you to do event by event by event. At any point in the assembly, you can stop the event and change the parameters for that particular event that's being auto-assembled, making it longer, shorter, changing it from an audio video to an audio only, or any variety of changes. 
in step, you allow yourself to do an edit by event, by event, by event. You do one event, it'll stop. Then you push the step key again, it will load the next one in. You can change that and record that. Uh, once it's loaded into the memory, you can ha you have full range over it as you would any normal edit. You can set new in times, new out times, whatever you desire to do. In connection with that, there are two questions, two keys that are involved, the but edit key and the allow overlap key. If in the assemble or the step mode, you decide to make a change in an event, and change the timing, it will also affect all of the times for the events that come in following that event. If you want all of the events that follow that event to be butted up against the end of the edit that you've just changed, push the but edit key. That way, everything else will be pushed down or pulled up so that when the changed edit finishes, the next edit will be recorded immediately at the end of that. If you push the allow overlap key, you will allow an overlap to be recorded. In this case, the event that you've changed, you've made longer, but you don't want to change all of the remaining events, so you push the allow overlap key, and none of the times will be changed for the remaining events. They will still be recorded at the edit times listed in the EDL. All right, let's go through the keys. To auto-assemble, you go to the mark screen and the assemble key. Now, before you depress the assemble key, you must go over to setup and go into edit list function. Here, you must assign an input device. Turn your EDL off and select where your input is coming from, either serial in, which is your paper tape, or disk in for floppy disk. Here we'll use serial in. We now have serial in and serial out. This will allow information to be input into the edge as well as information written out every time you perform an edit. This is a wise way to do it because you read in an edit in. If you choose to modify it, the new modification is automatically punched out. That way you keep an, a complete and current updated list. With serial in or disk in on, you can now turn EDL back on, go back to the mark screen, and push the assemble key. In the assemble key, you have two modes to work. You have assemble or step. Now, before you begin doing any auto assemble, push the reset key. This will reset the system to begin auto assemble from your first edit. So you'll push the reset key. Next, you can assemble an edit, or you can step through an, uh, an edit list. If you assemble, this means group assembly, and it will allow you to assemble any number of events from one through the end of the list or up to any point that you choose. The screen you come to immediately after pushing the assembly key is update offset, yes or no. This refers to yes to a but edit or no, allowing an overlap. If you say yes to update offset, what that means is that any change that you make in any one of the edits that is being auto-assembled, in other words, you can stop the auto-assembly process during any particular event and modify its timing. If you modify the timing and you say yes to update offset prior to that, what that means is any modification in the timing you want to be reflected in all of the following edits. So it will either move their record times earlier or later. If you say no to update offset, that means you don't want any changes in the timings to be reflected. So it will allow for overlaps or for holes, black holes. So be particularly careful in using yes and no. In this case, I'm going to say no. I now get a number screen and it prompts me for the from number, that is the first event I want to auto-assemble. I will enter the number one. That means I want to go from the first event into the list, or the first event number one, and I enter that, and it now requests the outside limit, the two number, the one, the last event that will be auto-assembled. 
I can enter any specific number, or I can say, enter. If I use the enter without putting a number in, it will go through the entire list and do the last one. If I push the step key, it will allow me to auto-assemble each event, event by event. It doesn't do a group assembly. By pushing step, it loads the next event ready to be loaded into the edge, into the system. Then I can modify it, and I have to tell it to record. When I push step, I also get the question, update offset, yes or no. Yes, I want to butt edit, or no, I want to allow an overlap. When I say yes, remember, it takes any, any change in timings, any modification to the timings, and automatically carries them all the way through to every event that comes in thereafter, allowing me to butt edit when I make a, a change in timing. If I say no, <clears throat> it allows me to allow an overlap. That is, I can change the timing in this event, but it will not affect any timing in the events that follow. And that's the auto assembly process. You can save a lot of time by doing offline work, doing all of your creative decisions in the offline, creating an edit decision list, then putting it into the system and doing it automatically assembled. And there you have the Edge, an easy to use editor that will rival even the most sophisticated and complex of computer assisted editors. Always use your operator's guide and refer to this tape when necessary. And please feel free to call us at CMX at 800-538-8092. Thanks very much for watching this tape, and we wish you many hours of happy editing.